Welcome back, Real Talk family. So, from the title of this video, you already know what this video is going to be about. This is going to be the GED test math part two. Okay, you guys, I wanted to come on here and just let you guys know I will be deciding to do a voiceover for this video so that all the people, all of my subscribers who are interested in the math GED test, you can be able to actually see the material that I am presenting because I noticed in the last video you could not see the whole entire page. So I want to make sure that I am making it available to you guys so that you guys can see it so you guys can screenshot it so you guys can actually write the material down for yourself and you can study okay you guys if you are new to my channel and you have never been to my channel and you like my content make sure you subscribe to my channel all right you guys stay tuned all right you guys so we are going to start off with order of operations so when dealing with order of operations, we have to do it in a certain order. So we convert that to PEMDAS. And what PEMDAS means is this is the way that we are going to solve the problem. The P stands for parentheses. The E stands for exponents. The M stands for multiplication. The D stands for division. The A stands for addition. And the S stands for subtraction. In school, we learned it as, um, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And so that is what that simply means in short term. So this is how we have to um, do our problems and solve our problems. So for this first problem, we have three times in parentheses, pretty much parentheses is five minus two, close parentheses, minus 21 divided by three plus two. Then we have another parentheses and that's seven minus five, close parentheses squared. So that five is squared there. So then in solving it, we gotta do the PEMDAS. So parentheses, we have to solve parentheses first. As you can see, we have two parentheses. So we are dealing with those two problems right there where it says five minus two in parentheses and we have seven minus five in parentheses we all always always remember to solve everything from left to right so we are going to start off with the five minus two because it is to the left and five minus two equals three and seven minus five equals two then let's continue drop down the rest of your problem three times three and that's the parentheses minus 21 divided by three plus two then parentheses two close parentheses squared two squared equals four then we're gonna bring the problem down so that we can keep on solving so we have three then we have parentheses we have a three in the parentheses and that's the same as multiplication minus 21 divided by three plus two and then we have the four in parentheses. So let's solve. Then we have three, then we bring that down. Three times three equals nine. 21 divided by three equals seven. And two times four equals eight. Bring that down. Nine minus seven plus eight. Left to right. Nine minus seven equals two. And two plus eight equals 10. So our final answer is the 10. Okay, you guys, let's get into the percents to decimal, changing the percents to decimal. For example, 20% becomes 0.20 or 0.2. 4% becomes 0.04. And you can always do that in your calculator. You are provided a calculator so you don't have to even worry about working too hard. Decimal to percent, 0.2. 25 becomes 25% because you moved that decimal over and that's how you got your percentage. 0 0.3 becomes 30%. All right, you guys. So we have the column fraction, decimal, and percent. Let's start off with one fourth. One fourth is the same as one over four. The decimal converted will be 0 0.25. The percentage is 25%. Another problem, one over two, which is the same as one half, 
in decimal form, that becomes 0 0.5. And then we have our percentage, 50%. So there you get your percent. So, okay, let's continue. Okay, you guys, so now we are going to start working on ratios, proportions, and rates. A ratio describes the relationship between one part and another part. A ratio can be expressed in a number of ways. In words terms, the ratio of 3 to 5, rational, which is fraction form, is 3 over 5. Colin, 3, and then you see the colon right there, 5. All of these mean that there are three of one kind of thing for every five of another kind of thing. So that breaks down what ratio means. Okay, so I gave you all a problem. Let's read it and let's solve it. In a certain cooking schools, the ratio of French chefs is four to seven. If there are 33 total chefs in the school, how many of them are Italian chefs? Okay, the answer to that, let's read it over. The smallest group of chefs that could be in a ratio of 4 to 7 is 11 chefs because you're going to add the 4 plus 7 and you are going to get the 11. This means that the multiplier between the ratio numbers and the actual numbers is 3 and then you're going to put pretty much timetables like parentheses. It's the same thing as timetables. And you're going to have 11 times 3, and that's going to give you the 33. The ratio number of Italian chefs is 7, and 7 times 3 is 21. So your answer is 21. Okay, you guys, moving on to unit rates. A rate is a ratio that involves words or phrases like per. 60 miles per hour, $14 per hour, or for every. So whenever you hear that term for every. So for example, one free coffee for every three purchased. Whenever a question asks for an answer involving a unit like mile, minute, or hour, divide the total amount by the total number of units to calculate the amount per unit. And that pretty much breaks down that. And so next, we are going to be moving on to our rates and proportions, okay? Okay, you guys, so let's solve another problem that's dealing with unit rates. Luna drove her SUV in the city for a total of 189 miles. She used 9.8 gallons of gas. To the nearest tenth of a, of a mile per gallon, how many miles per gallon was Luna's SUV averaging? Okay, so we are going to take the 189 miles and we are going to divide that by 9.8 gallons. And that is going to give us 19.28 when we divide that. So since they want us to round it up to the nearest tenth, we get 19.3 miles per gallon. So that's how we get that. Moving on to proportions. So all proportions are is two ratios equal to one another. For example, one fourth equals to four sixteen. Cross multiply over here. You have the one times the four going across. Like if you're going up and down, the one times four is going to give you four, and then the four times four is going going to give you sixteen. So four over sixteen. They are equal to each other, and they are equal to 16, so 16 equals 16. Okay, you guys, on the test, you are going to also have percent change on the test, and this is also on the formula sheet, so you don't have to really worry about remembering anything to do with formulas because it is going to be provided, but I went ahead and put it up here, and for that, you have the difference over the original equals the percent over 100. And that is dealing with percentages whenever, like I said in the last video, and I talked about how whenever you get 20% off, when you get 40% off, 50% off. So I just wanted to elaborate more on that so you guys can get familiar with actually seeing percent problems because we deal with that in everyday life. All right, you guys, moving on to angles. 
This first angle on the left, where you see right angle, a right angle measures 90 degrees. And obtuse angles measures more than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So as you can see, I have 120 degrees. That is more than 90, and it is less than 180. Okay, you guys, when dealing with a straight line, you are going to, that is always going to give you a measurement of 180 degree, an angle that measures at 180 degrees. That is, that is what it measures at all the time. Okay. And then we also have another angle that I didn't mention on here, but the adjacent angle, the adjacent angle are two angles, two angles that are adjacent when they share a common side and a vertex. So whenever you have two angles pretty much equal to each other, let's say, for example, 55 degrees, then you have a 40 degree, they can coexist with each other, just like when you're dealing with perpendicular lines, like on the number line. So that is the same as that. And so, and also, I didn't mention, in acute angles measures at less than 90 degrees. So, for example, a 55-degree angle, a 40-degree angle, a 70-degree angle, that is what you are dealing with when it comes to acute angles. Just to give you guys a clear understanding of um, angles, because some geometry is going to be on there as well. So make sure that you understand that this is not a memorization test. This is a test of critical thinking. So you have to use a lot of critical thinking on this test, you guys. Okay, let's move on. All right, you guys. So I would like to point out a couple things so you guys are aware of things to expect on the GED test. Uh, I want to let you guys know that the formula sheet will be provided so you do not have to worry about remembering any of the formulas. You are given two retakes if you fail the test, which means that the first time you take the test, let's say you fail the test, you get another time to take it. Say you fail that test, you get another time to take it. So pretty much you get a total of three times to take it, but you do get two retakes if you do fail it. And I believe that if you do fail the test after that third time, I believe they give you like, a, I want to say a 60 day period of preparing for the test. Also, the calculator that you are allowed to use is the Texas Instrument 30XS. So I inserted a picture right here so you guys can actually see the calculator that you are going to need it. Most centers will provide a calculator, but I've heard that sometimes they may not even have a calculator. And with COVID going on and stuff like that, I would just advise everyone to already have your calculator provided. Also, the material that I use um, when providing you guys with the questions that I inserted in the previous clips was the Barron's. I use Barron's and the GED book is how to prepare for the GED test. This was the 2014 exam edition. You guys, a lot of people like to say, well, it's best to get the newest GED book. And I'm here to tell you that. Um, I just recently passed my test, um, what, August of this year, and I use this same book. I've been studying out of this book, and honestly, I feel like this is a very good book. It explains everything that you are, the problems that you are doing, they explain it very thoroughly so you can get a clear understanding of things that you may not understand. I want to let you guys know that you got this. You got this. Believe in yourself, trust in yourself, trust the process, and just take the test. Allow yourself to be able to know that you got this, you guys. I hope that this video helped you guys a lot. If you have any questions, make sure you leave your comments in the comment section below. If it was something that I did not cover and you would like me to go more in depth on it, make sure you leave me a comment as well, you guys. Thank you guys so much. I'm wishing you guys a successful, 
a successful score on this GED test. Thank you guys so much for your support. So until next time, I will see you guys later. Peace. Thank you.